Not good. The malevolence is getting stronger. I my, the effects are already starting to show. Look at that. Taking me back to Zasteria, are we? So our goal is to get back to town after a surprisingly brief water temple. I've been conditioned conditioned by rumors of video games I haven't played. I just think that water temples are a terrifying thing in all contexts. <laughs> Leave me alone. So is something gonna happen on the way out? Something. One of the one of the perks of this game actually is actually that oftentimes stuff totally does happen on the way out. We'll see if something interrupts me. It's actually shockingly common. Oftentimes it's like, oh yeah, just go on this not uneventful return trip. I'm like, oh crap, cutscene's happening. Like almost every time. Oh, malevolence everywhere. So are we just creating a blight upon mankind? See, it really seems like 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 uh like Velvet's gonna be the first hell dolph, right? I guess this is why the dungeon was short, is because this was technically part of the progression towards the dungeon, and this part was pretty long, by comparison. I think it took about as long to do this area as it did to do the entire dungeon, actually. But the, but the dungeon was more interesting because I was kind of doing a step-by-step -step process as opposed to wandering around. Well, here's a teleport pad. Um... West? Does that a, did I do good? I think I yeah I did good. Okay. <laughs> Could not actually quite tell. Oh my goodness. There's so many of them. I'm here again. Oh, I might have I may have a this may be my farming spot. If I can if I can come back here periodically. Like this this is a super effective way to gather these things. Part of me wonders how the loading of these things works, by the way. Back to east, back to west. Are they back? Okay, they don't come back that quickly. <laughs> I think if I go back to town and come back here, they probably reset, though. I don't know, I've definitely had them reappear in shockingly quick order. It might be a... Oh, what if you have to save? You know, let's learn something for science. Are you guys ready to learn something for science? Quick save, yes. There we go. Then we're gonna go title screen. Thankfully this game loads super fast, so there's like no actual time lost here. Which is nice. Let's learn something for science. Nope, doesn't work that way. So the reason why I tried that is because monster spawns do work that way. Uh, well, you'll, you'll remember when I was when I farmed, I was kind of in a, pre, in a, a tight area, because if I crossed a bridge, it was going to cause dialogue to happen, so I was I had to farm one room over and over again during that one time where I suddenly gained, like, ten levels to catch up with the game again. And, uh, when I did that, I fought the, like, five or six monster spawns in that area, then I saved, and then I loaded my save, and then suddenly all the monsters were back, and that happened every single time. So I was curious to see if the same trigger was involved in the, uh, respawning of these guys. It is not. But we're learning things, and that's the important thing. Oh! That was a quick response. If I hadn't immediately juked the side based on the map, I would have totally gotten caught. Yeah, this, this is kind of a nothing dungeon, huh? The actual temple's kind of interesting, because you kind of have a progression you're going through with the lighting things up, but the, uh... Those reefs are just a path. Grim, what's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? The hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence. They're all hitting their limits. Light. 
even the in girl why is this happening they're demons now their malevolence is spilling over the malevolence all of that energy spilling from their bodies that's what causes the demon blight Do you know what Demon Blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far! Track them down at all costs! We'll talk later. The Exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can. Well, things have escalated quickly. So, uh, I think I'm right about us being the first held off. Or early held off. I don't know. Maybe there's a another generation even earlier than this one where everything went to shit before. It's meh. But it seem it seems like uh Artorius is set to be the shepherd. Arturius, Artorius. I'm bad at keeping track of all these very similar names across different RPGs. <laughs> at some point. I think some third game came in on top of this game in Dark Souls to admit just muddy the waters by also being similar. So now I'm even more confused than before. That's fine. But I think Artorius might be the first shepherd, or at least a shepherd, an early incarnation, and that might be part of his goal while we're trying to be essentially the first Helldolf. Not because we intentionally want to destroy the- uh, That literally spawned on me. That was creepy. Not because we ne necessarily want to destroy everything, but because we want to destroy Artorius, and so the whole world is in our way. <laughs> it's really, it's really funny to think that our, that uh, we're so driven by our desire for revenge that the idea that the entire world can, being in our way is not enough deterrence, so we're still gonna go through with it, even if it means basically obliterating everything else that exists. The part where other people are willing to help me is a little hard to figure out. They've spent a lot of the game trying to justify why people are along for the ride, but some of them are more flimsy than others. There's, if nothing else, there's like a certain reliance on the idea that some of these characters are just apathetic by nature, basically. Like, eh, I don't care about anything ever, so that's why I'm helping. Or maybe we'll find out better reasons later. That's a lot of the, the Maggie Lou and stuff going on right now. Because even if the Abbey is evil and horrible, it's hard to justify dismantling the mechanisms they put in place that keep the world not dying, of all things. Like, actively, like, changing, like, going after the Abbey themselves might even be one thing, but they were literally, like, dismantling the things that keep all of society together on, on a basic fundamental level and not like in a sense a concept of like you need me because I keep things running but like no like actual like it's like kicking over the pillars that hold up a house we're just like specifically attacking the foundation of everything around us as opposed to the people controlling it admittedly we're doing it partly because we need to dismantle the power of the people we're trying to go after to attack them but damn we're willing to go exactly as far as we need to. So was there a climb spot here Cause that I missed? Oh, I went the I was thinking of the uh, spot with the chest down there. I missed the ramp. Okay. Now we know. Going the right way, right? Yeah, we're going back to Van, Al Van Altia and just giving up on this continent now. Leave me alone, but I just want to loot. Haha! -ha. You can't catch me. I'm out of here. I'm somewhat less out of here as it turns out because we're still we're still on the next screen. Holy crap, these beachside areas just go on forever in this, in this particular island. <laughs> it's just I think I might have spent 2 or 3 hours walking along beaches and coral for what for what led to a surprisingly brief uh water temple. Huh. Pacing. I guess I, I sometimes think that maybe they write a certain amount of dialogue, and then they make a dungeon that's big enough to make one of those dialogue dialogue things happen approximately once per, like, 
quote unquote room, and then they make the dungeon that long. Because if there's anything that this game's good about, and it's something that I've actually mentioned during my a bit during my uh, Mass Effect playthrough, I don't remember if I mentioned it here specifically. I can open. Wow, I have one one more than I need. Close. I, I, one thing that this game is, is pretty good about, as from a character perspective, is that it does like to make all of your characters interact with each other constantly, which is something that is often missing in RPGs. Uh, a lot of RPGs allow you to pick squad members or party members and cycle them in and out, which means that it's very hard to write dialogue for them, uh, because only some of them are present at a time, and it's always implied that everybody else is back at base. Uh, oh crap, again. So as a result, the dialogue's often kind of minimum, and what in those those types of games, like like Bioware games, will often do a decent job of developing those characters on an individual basis, but their interactions with each other is often minimal at, uh, for large amounts of the experience, to the point where them interacting becomes a noteworthy development that you're not used to seeing. And so one of the cool things about this game is the fact that everyone's always together, uh, which is which is really more of a JRPG thing. It's it's interesting because often, oftentimes characterization is one of the can be one of the pitfalls of some of the JRPGs across the board. But one of the primary uh, benefits is there's a certain level of suspension of disbelief when it comes to combat. Uh, we st they still acknowledge the balancing concept of uh, restricting combat to a handful of characters at a time and li making other people just not be in the fight on some level. In, th in this case, giving us the ability to cy cycle them in and out during combat. But because that means that, but because we uh, just sort of accept that slight incongruity, it allows us to have a story where all of the characters are present all the time. On, really? Which means they can all interact, and since you can assume everyone's always going to be around all the time, that means you can write dialogue that includes all of them. And so you have these entire conversations that Velvet's not even a part of, where the other five people are just constantly bickering or cheering and having all these scenes where Velvet, who is comparably, comparatively kind of boring, is often not even interacting with them. That, that's, a, that's a bonus, that's a good thing. That's something that I actually do appreciate, because you get more characterization. Because god, if everyone had to get their characterization from interacting with Velvet, they would not have a ton of characterization. <laughs> or they would all start to feel like the same person, because Velvet's not a great foil, necessarily. She's very one note. Oh my goodness, there's so many of these birds, and they're all going to be killed by malevolence. <laughs> Okay, there's an alarming amount of loot around here. I'm hopefully going the right way. Oh, yeah. Because this is the dock. Don't mind me just grabbing all their stuff. I have to grab the shinies, even if they are the same shinies from earlier. You never know. I was on the cusp a moment ago of not being able to open that box. Which is taunting me. It really does start to feel like a rare, rare game, though. Let's get to that dock before everyone finds out that we fucked up their entire island and way of life, and maybe society for the rest of the future. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, there's more. Oh, right. Same, same map, different screen. Hey, let's check in on uh, this guy. Can I talk to him, maybe? Oh, no? Yes? Perhaps people really are incapable of understanding one another. Ah, Dang it. I want the other three characters to break his mind. I wonder- I wonder why it stopped at only three of them and then never continued. Where are we going? Where's my mom? Kamalana, your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. Oh, Laffy said, learning delighted children, just like we raised you. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely wrong. Her mom would be sad if she had, could feel ever again. All right. You're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. 
Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans, for their own protection. Do you still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <sighs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realize this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons, or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then, on the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a Nominot. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse point... Clever boy. That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault? What's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out. So even the truth won't stop you. Very well.
Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Um... Uh... That's Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you too, you know. Yeah, so she is. Thank you, Kamoana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malakim experience emotions too. But Malakim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Malak turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <sighs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Moloch with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Molochim, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette... That must be what Aizen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. It's really strange watching the entire cast have like a... And like almost what amounts to an extended plot twist scene, but it's a plot that we all know about. Well, those of us that played Tales of Zestiria or watched Tales of Zestiria know about it at the very least. I guess everybody who started with this one might be surprised by this revelation. But yeah, not, it, it's, not, it's not only something revealed in Zestiria, it's not even a plot twist in Zestiria, it's the basic foundation of how the game works. And it's a plot twist in this game, which is weird. I don't think they play it up for sh trying to shock the audience necessarily, but it was this is the revelation where the, the characters in the story are finally catching up with where we are as viewers, knowing about how the world works already, and how demons just come from humans that are overcome by malevolence, and that destroying these shrines takes out the primary defense against malevolence, which means that we're just encouraging more demons to happen. We also got a bit more explanation, I suppose, on why this game is different from Zestiria. Because in Zestiria, uh, demons are everywhere. Uh, and you're trying to... You, uh, because of the malevolence and... Was, I don't know if they called it a blight or whatever. They had They had some... Uh, the Calamity. They called it a Calamity. It's hard to remember the name because it's so... It's one of the generic names. Uh... There was, a, there was a great calamity in Zestiria, and demons are everywhere. But normal people can't see them. Only shepherds and Malakim, I mean, and ser Seraphim, which are now called Malakim in this game, uh, only shepherds and Seraphim could could uh, actually see demons, those, which was what we now know as, you know, the people that have resonance. Uh, but nowadays, everyone can see demons, which makes them very, which means that they have to be explained by demon blight, and you have to control the masses and figure out how to con how to discuss the topic of them because the context has changed and that was likely the rich that was probably likely tied to the ritual that uh artorius did at the very very beginning of the game not not sloppy set but the one that happened to a different character in the very very first cutscene sometime before the one that happened to lofty set because that's when demons started showing up if, if i'm if i have the timeline correct here about when people started seeing them in the first place the question is what his goal is exactly, besides having a outside threat to bolster uh, Abbey forces, which might be his goal? It could be that he knew that uh, putting these these demons around to uh, the Therians 
putting them around to absorb the uh, malevolence was his... Like, he probably knew that that needed to ha happen, but didn't have the resources to do it. So maybe that was his mo motivation to reveal the demons to everyone so he could bolster his abbey forces so that he could have the resources he need to, needs to uh, put these therians in place. Uh, either way, I'm sure we'll get a lot of a big super villain explanation moment where he spills all his plans on us if I'm wrong about anything, I suppose. So I rescued this poacher who'd run away from one of those class 4 islands, right? She mentioned something about being hired by some chef to go hunt a rare wolf on the island. But she didn't see a single blasted critter on that island, let alone any rare wolf. Place was empty. Then why did she run away? Even though she never saw nothing, she kept hearing some beast howling round the island. Freaked her right out, I tell ya. When she got back to her boat, her food had been pilfered and her ship was scratched up to hell. She got out of there as quick as she could, but her ship sunk soon as she hit open water. Hmm. Sounds like whatever's there is as smart and manipulative as it is vicious. Sounds like. Later I heard some talk about how several exorcists had gotten killed on that island. If you plan on going, you'd best be very cautious. You can now go to a new Class 4 Administrative Zone, if you so desire. Grabbing things, grabbing things. Have I been down here yet? Grabbing more things. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, I saw there was a whole path up here. Is it just these, though? It is just these. I may have even gone here before then, because it doesn't amount to a, whole, to a whole lot, really. I love the fast load times. I'm so happy that this game doesn't have to stop to load every time I go through a map, because the maps are actually kind of small. But I don't, I don't have to feel that, though, because the, the downtime of screen transitions is like a few seconds. Ah, crap! There's no way back up. All right, we're back up top now. Sir, we just received a Sylph J from the boss of the Bloodwings. She has a job for us and wants us to meet her in Logress. How should we respond? Let's do it. Besides, we need to see if that demon in the villa was actually a Therian. Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logress. Prepare to set sail. Ready anytime! I lost my mother to a demon. Yet that girl's a Therian. I... I don't even know what I want anymore. Hey! That's pretty! You like to look at that thing, don't you? Yes. My mother... Someone very important to me gave me this. I treasure it a lot. Looking at it gives me strength. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Ah! What's wrong? My face! It's... it's scary! I don't want to look like that! I don't want my mommy to hate me! Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! When I was her age, that's just how I cried. Come, Alana. I want you to see this. That huge owie. What happened? It's big and ugly, isn't it? There are scary things about my body, too. But... Do you think I'm scary, Kamalana? No, not at all. But are you all right? Does that hurt? Thanks, sweetie. I'm all right, I promise. What about me? Do you think I'm scary? You're such a sweetheart, Kamalana. Nobody could ever be scared of you. Not me, not your mother, not Lafayette. You don't have to cry anymore. It'll be okay. 
I promise. <sighs> okay. That scar, was it from a demon? Yeah. They attacked my village when I was a girl. I was so hurt, I couldn't move. But my mother lured them away from me so I could survive. What happened to her? The last thing she said to me was, Stay strong and keep living. Come to the deck. Grimoire says she's learned something from the book. Hey, why is your face so red? It's nothing. Somehow, I doubt that. It's nothing, I, I swear. Do you all remember the second verse of that song Lafayette read earlier? Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therian shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Right. That's what I've gathered you all here to discuss. And we think that passage means that Inominat and the Therians will be revived by a chosen one, right? Yes, but the shall be forever reborn part kept bothering me. I've reconsidered my analysis. Suppose that instead of someone being chosen by Inominat to create Therians, the song means that Inominat chooses who becomes Therians. <sighs> but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. What do you think that could mean? That someone receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as a Therian. Like Kamoana! Which is to say that the Abbey figured out how to turn people into Therians, and then got right to work. That's... Are you really that surprised? Artorius has always been one to prioritize the many over the individual, as I well know. Another thing to consider is this wording about Therians being forever reborn. This could mean that one Therian will be reborn again and again. Or it could mean that different Therians will be born to take their place. Meaning that even if you kill one, there are more waiting in line. They can't be wiped out. Looks like prioritizing the one over the many was the right call this time, eh, Velvet? I never said I wouldn't kill her, if it would prevent Inominat's reawakening. But Therians can't be killed. Not truly. Hmm... So, in a nutshell, if you kill one, Another person who's receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as one. Right. But the song says that seven mouths feed the body. So there's only so many around. If you don't kill them, the next ones won't be born. Exactly. So we remove the seven Therians from their Earth Pulse points instead. But then, we also have to protect them so the Abbey doesn't steal them back. Or kill them. Sounds tricky. We've got to protect my bug, too. Yeah, you take real good care of that thing now, got it? You bet I will! In that case, we should probably work on securing a proper hideout for ourselves. You got a secret base or anything, Aizen? It's every man's fantasy, but sadly, I don't. We need a hard-to-find spot. One where we can guarantee a steady supply of malevolence for the Therians. Hmm, somewhere devoid of people but full of malevolence. Real poser you got there. With the Abbey in control of the entire continent, finding a place like that will be easier said than done. Meanwhile, Inominat's reawakening draws ever closer. We'll have to keep collecting our Therians while we search for a hideout. For now, let's just get to Logris. and food you got. Wait your turn, moron. I was drifting out at sea for three days. Almost died out there. Wee poor you. You probably deserved it. Say that again, wise ass. I dare you. Ah, uh, shut up, both of you. No one's getting anything until you pay me what you owe first. 
Uh, are they gonna be okay? Don't pay them any mind. Sailors are just a short-tempered bunch, that's all. Huh? The hell are you doing? What's going on? They've jacked up the price to dock our ship here. Oh yeah? Some real balls you've got there, buddy. If you lot want to moor here, that's the price you're gonna pay. Look, pirates are a liability to begin with, but calling your crew infamous these days would be putting it lightly. The more wanted you are, the more it's gonna cost to hide you. Capiche? <sighs> Hard to argue there. Benwick, just pay the man what he wants. <sighs> yes, sir. You're such pushovers. You and the captain both. I knew I could count on you to come through, Eisen. Pleasure doing business with you. Looks like I'm causing you trouble. It comes with the job. Don't sweat it. Some sailors just have longer tempers than others. <laughs> Noted. I'm worried about the voice actor. Oh look, new costume. I'm, I'm worried about Kamoa's voice actor because she sounds like she's in physical pain. Oh, there you go. She looks way better with the jacket though, but now you can take the jacket off. And then she just runs around purely in white and gold. The jacket helps. I was wondering when she's gonna get another costume. Just I, I'm still wondering when Magalo ever gets one, or most characters really. Expedition's done again. Ooh. Something worth money. And new zone. Oh my goodness, so much just happened. Back to back. Down to the next one then! Ha ha! Still just clicking on stuff mindlessly. <laughs> it rewards me, so I do it. Gives me cooking recipe, uh, recipe. <clears throat> cooking recipes and uh, cooking materials at the very least. But yeah, uh, Kamawana's voice actor sounds like she's actually straining herself to the point of possible future disability with that voice. I don't know. It doesn't sound like a healthy voice to do.